basically I was raised in a Catholic church since I was a child. I was, uh, got baptized, confirmation, communion. So, you know, I had been praying all along. I was asking God over and over again, saying, please God, you know my heart, you know I want to learn. I love studying your word. I want to grow. I want to know the truth about so many things in the Bible. You know, I told God, I said, God, you know, Revelations is something I've always been interested in. Didn't understand quite so much as, as well as I wanted to. So we were just really surprised because three days after I prayed, I get Revelations today in the mail, which I was so shocked. I said, gosh, I didn't know God answered your prayers by mail. But uh, obviously he did. Um, and I said, that's a real sign. And the first night we were there, we were just drawn right in. We felt like what we heard, the message we heard, was so much truth in it. And we were so excited to hear what Ron had to say. We heard so many truths and, and I heard so much new information that I just had to keep going. I just had to know more. And I felt like if God led me to it, I was gonna go through it. This 28 pages of notes here I took during the session. I was a serious student. I wanted to know everything that he was saying. I wanted to go back and research it and make sure it was the truth, even though he was quoting right out of the Bible. Um, but I was very excited about it and very serious about it. And I told him we have got to get baptized. This is just the right place to be. Wow. I would never have thought that God had planned for me what the last eight years has brought me to. Well, since I've recorded this video, I have been given so many opportunities by God. He has used me in unbelievable ways, things I never thought I would do. Shortly after uh, I joined Sharon Church, I was asked to consider becoming the director of women's ministry. And although I had been in other churches and ran other ministries, I was so new to the Adventist church that I wasn't quite sure whether I was capable of doing that there. And I prayed about it and God led me to say, yes, step up to the challenge. And so I did. I stepped up to the challenge to become the director of women's ministries there and have loved every moment of nurturing the women at church. It has been an unbelievable journey. We have done some incredible things for God. From there, I was asked to become head elder. So I was fairly new into that position as well, but I'm a quick study and I have an opportunity to lead 11 elders, which manage about 45 to 50 ministries. I honestly feel like the Holy Spirit is the one that is leading me because every day I wake up, I just ask the Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me. And I give up my will and I do the will of the Father. So I am thrilled to be actively working, doing God's work in every way possible. Coming from outside the church and not having focused much on prophecy, I find that prophecy is unbelievable and I just have to share it with everyone. I want people to know what I know. I had bookshelves full of prophecy, but I never quite fully saw the picture come together and I wasn't quite sure if that was man's idea or if that was God's. And as I studied scripture against the prophecy that I learned at the evangelism seminar, I was blown away and I said, I have got to get deeper into this. I will tell you, it's not always easy when you join a church, especially the remnant church, and Satan knows I'm going to be preaching a message about warning people about what he's doing in the end of time. Uh, I think Satan had it out for me and he found lots of opportunities to bring up many challenges, but never have I wavered in my faith because God asks us to trust him fully. And one of the things I love most is God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. And no matter what challenges come to me, I continue to go back and I surrender those to God and let God work those out because his plan is always better than mine. I cannot thank the conference enough and everyone watching that contributes to evangelism. Because I will tell you, there are people like me out there who may have been in church their whole life and have been a Christian their whole life and yet never heard the truth of this message. This conference invested in sending Ron Halverson and John Bradshaw to the big screen and in person so that we could get the message of the truth. There is nothing more important than having other people understand the truth. 
And here I was in church for years and years and years thinking I was on the right path and I was missing a big piece of the puzzle. And I will tell you, thank you to everyone that invests in evangelism. That is the biggest thing we can do for Christ right now. He is asking us to spread the message. And how do we do that? We do that through evangelism. Not just big sessions and events, which are fantastic, which brought me here, and I am the fruit of that investment, but even in the smallest of ways in teaching people how to go out and talk to their friends and talk to everyone around them because God does not want that any should be lost. So one of the things I found most interesting is when I joined Sharon, I realized I was amongst all the Adventists who had grown up as Adventists, and I stuck out like a sore thumb. So I don't know that there were a lot of people that came from outside the denomination into the church, and that was surprising to me. And I thought, why don't more people know about this? Why isn't this church full of people who maybe heard this for the first time like me and are excited to share this with others? And that's why evangelism is so very important. And I will tell you, if you do not know this message, you will be surprised, blessed, and excited to know that it only gets better because God gets, He's with you through the entire journey and you will grow as a Christian like you've never grown before.